people are not blank pieces of paper. And and this is just me using like a, a pretty simple artist analogy here. A blank sheet of paper allows you to put whatever it is that you want on it as an artist or a creative or a writer, right? But people are not that. We don't just take a blank sheet and start fresh. And if we make a mistake, you just say, ah, crumble it and throw it away and start a new one. So people are not blank pieces of paper, right? And for the simple fact that our stories doesn't begin from the moment we are born. Our story began way before we were conceived. The two adults who decided to come together and make, you know, us exist. Guess what? They had a history before they came together. And that history is going to get traveled, going to get passed down to you. Through the genes and, and everything else, how, you know, your mother carried you. Was she a smoker? Was she a drinker? Was she an addict? Was she healthy? Was she not healthy? Did she already have health conditions? And those things get passed down. Right? But back to that analogy, you know, unlike paper and pencil, our history isn't recorded, erased, and rewritten in this manner. Like You don't just say, ah, no, I don't like that line. Let me scratch it out and, and put a new one on. That's not how we are, right? Because you, you can't erase what you can't see, and that's the history before you came. You understand what I mean? Like, this is the part of your story that is tucked deep, deep in the depths of a person's soul. It's the history you didn't personally experience, but it resonates with you every time it, it flares up or it pops up or someone triggers you that it reminds you of, of that history, right? For a lot of people of color, it's, you know, um, racism, uh, it's slavery, it's, it's how people were treated in, in refugee camps, is civil wars, is so many different things, right? And, and you are living here, you may have not gone through that, but you know your parents did and you know your grandparents did, and so it resonates with you. When someone says a word that triggers you because of what that history means to you, you are now engaged in a conversation or a situation that is, is, can be damaging. Right? And that's the power of just environments. And history is a part of your environment. So... These are traumas, right? Or successes or experiences of our ancestors that to this day, a lot of us defend it with our lives. But we can never articulate why we feel these feelings. You, you get what I'm saying? Like it's, it's not even our feelings, but we are ready to die for them. It's not our experience, but we're ready to put our lives on the line for them and even though our intentions are not literally to give my life up but in this scenario or in a situation where you know conflict escalates people's lives are often taken without regard like you're taking someone else's life or hurting someone or making you know shaming someone and you have no idea why sometimes how your history or someone else's experiences influence you to make that decision and often these decisions are permanent like you can't reverse it if you wanted to you know so I, I say these are traces of our ancestors experiences right and they always they will always remain in the next generation whether they like it or not for for some people who are able to suppress it for as long as they they can or as long as they live right and others can't. It's right at the forefront. So they're ready to do whatever they need to do to defend something that they didn't actually experience. But the idea of somebody they knew or loved going through that, and now you are either poking at it or poking fun at it, triggers them. Right? And, and it's crazy because although we don't live in the past, 
The past resides in us.